Hi, I'm Joe Farsetta. As a certified master inspector, I can't stress the importance enough of the need to test for water and water quality in any home that has a private well. You know, we here in the United States tend to take water and water quality for granted, but in many areas of the world, you can't take it for granted. It is considered a global dilemma, and in fact, the United Nations and UNICEF has named March 22nd of every year as World Water Day. 1.6 million children die every year from drinking water from tainted sources. So you say you own a home that already has a private well, or you're thinking of purchasing a home that has a private well, or maybe you'd just like to know more about well and water quality. Today we're going to examine both subjects right here on Natchi TV. One critical aspect of taking any water sample is identification of the collection point. In this case, the collection point is the kitchen sink. Second aspect of water sampling is to always remember to remove the aeration device. Now depending on the type of test that you're running, uh, this is usually required. There are certain tests, however, that would require you to leave the aeration device in. Once the aerator is removed, I would take a uh, alcohol swab or Q-tip with alcohol on it and disinfect the faucet. Some states require the use of a flame to superheat the metal to disinfect it. After that, I would turn the water on. I would allow it to run until there's a noticeable change in temperature or until I have ensured that the well pump has gone on and started to fill the tank. As the water is running, I would take my container and fill it according to the lab's instructions. Another commonly overlooked source of possible water contamination in a home is right here. Water dispensing equipment, such as the type seen on this refrigerator, often have filtration devices attached to them. In fact, some homes use whole house filters. Now the important thing to remember is that regardless of whether you use a private well or a public well or municipal water, there is a real need to change those filters quite often, once every six months, once a year at least, or as the manufacturer suggests. The problem is as the filters become old and do their job of removing contaminants, they tend to raise what's called a heterotrophic plate count, which is the viability of all sorts of microorganisms and bacteria to grow and flourish inside the filter. As water passes through that filter, the likelihood that the water passing out of the filter and into your cup is heightened. We're out here in the country and I want to give you an example of what a typical wellhead would look like. Now what we're seeing here uh, are three basic components. We're seeing the well casing, um, we're seeing the well cap, and we're seeing conduit which takes the power uh, from inside the house, uh, brings the wires up into the cap and down. This uh, particular well uses a submerged or submersible pump and that pump is also known as a multi-stage assembly and it drives the water up from the bottom of the well to the top. Uh, just below the frost line here, there's what's called a, a pitless adapter. It changes the direction of the water flow, sends it to the house, to the equipment that's inside the house. So a couple of things we do look at first when we're outside is, of course, we look at the cap. This cap is a sanitary cap. The reason I know this is that I've peeked up underneath it, and it does have a rubber gasket. I can also tell some other things about this well, specifically that um, there's a positive flow of water. The static level of the water has come up the uh, casing and actually is trickling out the side of the casing through a drill hole. A couple other things we look at while we're out here examining the uh, the wellhead is the pitch and roll of the land. What we don't want is we don't want a situation where the area directly around the wellhead is pitched in such a way that runoff uh, can uh, gather around the casing and trickle its way down into the water table and aquifer. Uh, what we also have here on the property is we have some uh, severe inclines where a lot of runoff is heading this way and so we want to be particularly careful when evaluating the pitch around the wellhead. Another important thing to note uh, when you're inspecting wells is the distance between the wellhead and any sanitary system that might be on the property. Now one thing we do know about this particular site is there's no city sewers around here. We're very rural. 
There is an on-site septic tank here with Leachfield. And what you'll find later in the show is there is a relationship between uh, human waste and how it can affect water quality. Um, so we want to make sure that that distance is maintained and established. In this case, this wellhead is more than 100 feet away from the septic field. Uh, that's important to note. That's an important thing to note during your inspection. Um, and it's important that the well be installed according to state and local guidelines as far as that relationship uh, exists. Now there are a few things to keep in mind when deciding which tests you want to run. Some of them might be dictated by state, county, or local authorities, while others may be dictated by your own personal preferences or health concerns. For instance, one of the basic tests that almost everybody runs has to do with bacteria. So a bacteriological test would be concerned with coliform in the water. Coliform is most closely associated with human sewage on the property that's leaching into the water table or the aquifer. Another item you might be concerned with if you are nursing or if you have an infant would be nitrates and nitrites. Nitrates and nitrites uh, can affect the baby's ability to absorb oxygen and can result in what's called infant cyanosis or blue baby syndrome. Other items of concern might be common metals found in the water such as lead, copper, iron, or manganese. More sophisticated tests can also be run having to do with volatile organic compounds and hydrocarbons. If your well is located within a mile or so of a gasoline station, whether active or abandoned, you might consider also running some of these tests. Another important aspect of the testing process is to ensure that the lab where the water samples are being sent has a state accreditation where the well is located. Other things to be concerned with include care and custody of the sample. For instance, most water samples will require refrigeration. They also have certain parameters of time in which to deliver them to the lab. For instance, bacteriological samples typically require 24 hours to be in the hands of the lab or the sample is no longer viable. Other things to be concerned with is to make sure that the water sampler is following EPA state or local guidelines when gathering those samples. As far as knowledge goes, it's important for your well sampler and inspector to have knowledge about the well and about water quality. InterNACHI inspectors and certified well samplers have such knowledge. They're your best bet in getting a quality result from water sampling tests. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and I hope you learned something from it. Drinking water is a great natural resource and it's our responsibility to try and make sure that that water does stay clean and drinkable. It's also important to remember that if you're buying a home with a private well, you have a duty to yourself and your family to try and make sure that the water you're consuming is drinkable. We covered a number of topics today from what can go wrong with water, common things found during an inspection, and even a little bit about the configuration of a well. I hope it was helpful. And also be sure and check your inspector's credentials. Make sure he's qualified to do what you're paying him to do, especially as it pertains to inspecting wells and taking well water samples. Thanks again, and thanks for watching Natchi TV.